All right. All right. And so I started that. Let me share my screen. Okay. Do you guys see me? Yep. Okay. Let's start with Jim Bowman. Go down the line, huh? Yeah. So this is a little trip to India um, in 2016, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And this is a tiger reserve for, uh, so this is bait. <laughs> <laughs> and we were trying to, um, well, we, we saw tracks of several tigers, but on the ground, but never saw a tiger. Mm. Um, but there are lots of deer in the area. This is a kind of a cool, uh, this one is called a Sika deer, S-I-K-A. Mm. Kind of interesting antlers. Yeah, they're really different. They're, they're kind of soft and furry and, mm. but, uh, nothing special about this picture. Just, uh, trying to, um, attract uh, the tigers. <laughs> yeah, when we were in Komodo, the, uh, the the only thing that was left on the island were deer and goat. And they were there to attract the dragons. Yeah, it's, you know, pretty pretty amazing. Amazing how many uh, still populated there. Because the dragons were had them outnumbered, but they were still, you know, keeping their population up. Yeah. Where was this though now? Uh, on the island of Komodo in Indonesia. Oh, okay. You know, they have the dragons, those huge right, lizards, yeah, monitor they, lizard, but they, they were doing about seven yeah. feet long. <laughs> yeah. So, so I saw one of the couple of these in the Calgary Zoo there a few so, a few months ago. And they're pretty vicious looking. Yeah, the claws are amazing too. But I, I guess their killing mechanism is the um, all the bacteria they have in their saliva. Right. Oh, really? Yeah, basically, they just nip at their prey and then go away and wait for it to die. And they, <laughs> and they, come, and they come back when it's about, about ready to croak and have at it. Wow. Hmm. And their sense of smell is amazing. They, they, can, they can actually swim over to another island because they smell something over there, like the turtles laying eggs or something like that. Oh, okay. And they'll wow. actually swim over to another island feast. Just pretty scary. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I like this one. I, I suppose you could punch up, you know, the contrast a little bit and spice it up a little. Yeah, if you're interested, let's see what yeah, this is. So this is uh, one of many, uh, uh, what is it called? Peacocks. <laughs> peacocks, geez. And uh, yeah, the peacocks were all over the island there, or the, the uh, Reserve. Tiger Reserve, mm -hmm. and uh, just a nice picture. Just felt like it was uh, it was a nice silhouette. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fun. Yeah, I like that. I don't think I'd do anything with it to change it. Yeah, yeah. go on to the next. All righty. So this is um, a gray langur they call them. They're all over India at the sacred sites and stuff. Um, this particular tiger reserve is in the far north. Uh, you know, kind of India has, a, it's the shape in the north is kind of like peaked. Yeah. And um, this is the far peak, kind of like next to uh, Nepal. Oh, so wow. it's near Nepal, but um, but it's just a, you know, it's a, a nice area where lots of animals attra are attracted, of course. Hmm. Was it colder up there? It, was it colder? Yeah. Uh, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Uh, not terrible. It's not, it wasn't bitter cold, but. It definitely, uh, you know, it's probably kind of like Arizona during the winter. 
Because okay. we were up there in the winter time. I got you. Yeah, he's interesting. Nice eye contact on that one. Yeah. Yeah. So you can go on to the next. <laughs> oh, I like this. That's a nice shot. This is pretty cool. That's real nice. Yeah, that's kind of like um, one of the best um, of this group. And this was also, um, I guess they're called Mahatmas or whatever. And uh, you can, you can kind of, I guess you can rent these guys. I don't know. Uh, but he was just wandering around and he came up to our Jeep and uh, the, uh, oh yeah, I see it on that far right hand or left hand side. Yeah. yeah. I didn't yeah, get that little there. spot there. Yeah, you can clone okay. that or crop it. Yeah. No biggie. But, um, but yeah, he was just, um, he was an interesting character. A trunk really leads you into the picture. Or it does. Yeah, it really does. Yeah. And I don't even mind the horizon being on an angle. I think it kind of adds yeah. to it. Yeah, it's kind of fun. Especially since he's upright. Yeah, that works out nicely. Mm -hmm. So you didn't go up for a ride there, Jim? No, I didn't. What? Didn't get up on the up in the chair for a ride? No, <laughs> no, not this time. Yeah, I was in. I think it was Thailand, and I got on one of these, and uh, they didn't have a you know a platform. It was just a little thin blanket, and the hair is like you know like spikes. Oh. <laughs> it's almost like sitting on a cactus <laughs> it's not comfortable so didn't stay up there very long yeah yeah so go on to the next yeah yeah i like that image that was a nice image yeah that was beautiful this one's nice too that's that. really nice the atmospheric yeah yeah also i did is i added those birds but kind of got a little more interest but yep Otherwise, um, it's a pretty much a straight shot. That was our our Jeep caravan going in. And I think we spent about three or four days there. Mm, nice. Are these birds that you've taken yourself, Jim, or is that something? Uh, yeah, I think, you know, there's both, um, you know, birds you can do in, uh, what, at Luminar, you can add birds to oh, the scene. Okay. Uh, and they're pretty much, um, they got a collection of them, so. Yeah. Yeah, I think maybe this one could go. They do uh, have masking yeah. when, you, when you add them in, so you can selectively put in and take out ones you want or don't want out of the group. I don't right. Know, I don't know if you've tried that, but it's very helpful. Yeah, I suppose you can just kind of move the... Uh, Move it around a little bit. I moved it around just to. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> yeah, sometimes you just move it, move it, and you can't get it right. So there's a mask function. Yeah, I see another one up here too. There's a mask function where you can uh, just get them out of there before you commit. Oh, oh, really? Okay. I didn't know that. Maybe I could. So you just kind of pull yeah, it no, out in a mask. I haven't done it in a while. But let's take a look. We'll add some more in here. I really like the atmosphere. It does look awesome, doesn't it? Yeah. All right. So, um, move you guys over. So, down here in uh, augmented sky, I believe. Yeah, you've got object selection. And uh, you've got all these different birds and things. So, let's say we wanted uh, these birds, which you brought in. Um, so you select it, I know. Yeah, so I selected it, and then. Uh, oh, but you get a little line around it. Yeah, I gotta try and here place object. That's where you. There it to. is. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna make it real big so we can see them. And it does keep them in the sky, so if you want them in the foreground, it can be an issue. So okay, so say we get them there, okay. And then over here, you've got your mask tool. Wait a minute. I got to take get rid of this. 
Okay, now, so where is it at? Uh, you see the augmented sky, you've got the yeah, right. set and on and off, and in between them, they have the mask. Oh, and that's a mask. Um, yeah, they changed the icon. It's confusing. It almost looks like a pen or something. Yeah. But that's a mask. Yeah. Okay. And it's in almost everything. So you hit that add mask, and then uh, you can do it with a brush and you know, pick your radio. So then your, your brush. Yeah. So, okay. so, so say you want to get rid of this guy. But oh. it's, it's opposite of what you think. So you're going to need to invert it. Okay. Yeah. Like that. And then, all ah, right. And when you go to paint, you know, it, instead of plus, you're going to have to hit your option or alt key and do a minus. So anywhere there's a hole. Ah, all right. Go. Okay. Then, yeah. and it's, then kind, just... it's kind of kludgy, you know, as far as let me undo that one. All right. Uh, yeah. I, I, uh... Now, have you got, have you been able to um, see? I don't know how this works with. Like if you've picked, taken a picture with a bird in the sky and you want to put that bird in there, uh, I can't get it to work. And maybe you can get it with this, with this augment the sky. Because can't yeah. you go down to the bottom and and it can place an I object. objects? But yeah, let's see what's in advanced settings uh, or or anything. You can you choose. Uh, Here it is. Get more sky. Yeah, get more objects. Yeah, yeah. there you go. If you do that, I think it just takes you to a website. Yeah. But somewhere. Or, or does it just, uh, but no, I think you can even take yeah. images somewhere. out of your own. Yeah. 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 I'm pretty sure I've, you I've added them. skies. You just yeah. have to find the folder. I can't remember how I did it, but there's a folder for skies. And then imagine they've got the same folder for sky objects and you just add them. And, and they probably need to be PNGs with transparency so that you're not adding. Oh, you know, the PNG. That's yeah, because because if you put it on a transparency, if you save it as a JPEG, it'll just bring the background back. So you need to do a PNG with trans with with alpha, they call it, which is transparency. Yeah. So. Okay. So. So, so like if you're in Photoshop, um, yeah. Let's see. I'll just grab this real quick. So if you're in Photoshop, we'll just do something down and dirty here. All right, and uh, I'm gonna double click and make this a layer. And um, right. maybe I'm just gonna select uh, this area here, okay, and I'm gonna invert it. And I'm just gonna get rid of the rest. All right, so let's say that's what you want. <laughs> Probably not. Right. Okay. <laughs> and then, and, and the then I would crop it. Yeah, and then I would crop it down so that you know it, it it's mainly in that area. Right. And uh, and then all the white is out is transparency. I I, I turn the checkerboards off because I find them distracting. But um, all that white area is is transparency. So then when you do a save as, um, you can pick. Uh, PNG. PNG. Yeah. Now, so is that's all you do? Yeah. So when you pick the PNG, let me just do it on desktop real quick. Yeah. This will give you the, the different ways. I usually do the large. I'm not concerned about space. So say we go back to desktop and we go here. So now when we... Uh, go to show this see it's it's just the image and the rest is all so i guess they got rid of that save with alpha i guess they assume if it's a layer it's, it's already got transparency so they're going to save it you used to have to check an extra box but you don't have to do that anymore i guess so there it is it, it's already saved and everything that's gray there is is alpha so if you put this into another image that's how it'll show well like, go ahead and do it. Let me just find right. out how the. Yeah, I just don't know where to put it. Um, I'll just put it next to the other one or something. It doesn't matter. Well, all right. Yeah, I'm going to. Yeah, let me just go back here and we'll, uh, we'll just take this back to uh, open. 
All right, so you got that. I'll just grab this and now let's see how let's say this is original, I guess. Let me just rename this. Right. Ah, yeah. uh, right. Yeah, there you go. It thinks it's the same object. Okay. Come on, open up. Okay. Just do a file. Oh, I see. Something's going on here. It's a lot of history. Let me shut that off. That let me do anything. Uh, here, we just change. There we go. Change the move. All right. Now we should be able to open it. Now, do you put it on a separate layer? Yeah, I don't come in as a separate layer. So you see, here's the layer here. So if you if you uh, drag it onto this object, there it is. You can move it around. Oh, uh, you know, we can make it bigger if you want it, and and so on. You can add a mask to it, just like any other layer. You know, take a brush and get rid of. Um, Take this back to black and white. Get rid of anything you don't want. Oh, that's what you do. Okay. That's the part that was puzzling me. There you go. Is the, but is if the you masking out of the, the part that you know you just want to get rid of. Yeah, but I mean, if we, if you're going to do this to make it an object you wanted to put into a lot of images, I would mask just the Jeep so there's yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. More, uh, yeah. And yeah. then and then you put it in the folder and I I'll see if I can find where that folder is for you. Uh, you put it in the objects folder and it'll appear there when you open up Luminar. Right. Well, okay. so what does PNG mean? Because that's kind of like a new new thing to me. Oh, I'm trying to remember what the it, it's a it's a file format. It's used mostly for now for uh, websites because uh, yeah. It, it's uh, it's a small format and it carries its own transparency. I'm trying to remember. Let me look it up. No, it's okay. I I'm I, curious because I, I used to know it, but I just can't remember it anymore. Well, that's uh, yeah, that's a good uh, trick. Yeah. What does ENG stand for? Portable network graphics. There you go. Okay. Yeah. So, GIF is graphic interchange format and so on. Okay. Okay. There you go. Great. Good. Another, another something else today. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's. That's why we pay you the big bucks. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that's how that works. All right. That's a nice image, though. I like that. Yeah, I like both of these. They're real yeah. nice. So you got more? Or go man. Let's see some more India. It's one of them. Sorry, sure, I'm I'm yeah, I've got definitely on my bucket list. I've got tons of stuff. All right, cool. Okay, so we're going to go back to Alan. I don't have too much this week, so yeah. I was I was in the parking lot the other day there, and I just snapped this little shot of my car. So nah. I, gave, I gave it the same treatment as the the other one that I did a few weeks ago. So. Mm -hmm. The only thing I would do is add some kind of detail around these wheels. The wheels, tires, I just, yeah. The tires, because it, oh, it's just kind of floating. Kind of floating, yeah. 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 Hover yeah. car. Yeah, right. Yeah. So that was a 97 Camaro? It's a 97 Camaro, yeah. Yep. Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, I just, uh, yeah, like I said, I, I've I was, uh, I, I kind of liked that first image that I did, so I just thought I'd try it out and find mine. So. Yeah, 
a cheap, you know, to, to lighten those so tires up. Probably add, add some tires to it then, because I don't think of. Well, they're there. It's just hard to see. Um, yeah. So if you want to, if you want to see them, I would uh, first just, you know, open up curves or levels or something that's gonna give you the ability to uh, make it really bright, so you can, you know, mostly in this area. Let's see here. Yeah, you can kind of see where they are. Okay, so. Yeah. Um, hmm. It's a lot easier if you have it on the layers, but right. um, this this is this is a cell phone as well, mm -hmm. right? So it's not. A... Mm -hmm. But basically, we just I'm just going to do it real quick with with a pen tool, but let's just say let's say that that's your yeah. Uh, that'll work. All right, I'm gonna just hit the con command key and make that into a area selection. So let's say that's where your uh, where your tires are. So then I would uh, I would just go and get rid of uh, this curve so you can see what you're doing. Okay. And then you could probably just add a new layer and then softly paint with a real light or lighter black, um, you know, maybe we'll just uh, pick this area here and we'll just take it down somewhere like that. Okay, get your brush, not that big, make it about like that. And then if you hit Apple or Command, H that hides that. Now you can kind of see what you're doing. Yeah, you, know, you can just kind of put it. Oh edge. yeah, that's cool. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's probably a little too much, but right. You know, just just enough to kind of give. I mean, a, a hint just feel for it. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably be a little darker. Loading, huh? Yeah, I'd make it a little darker too, but right. you know, just enough to show it. Okay. Yeah, sounds sounds good. Mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, well, this is from the other night. As you know, there's a big full moon, uh, and yeah. I took the full moon, and then I shot the the mountains, and then I just kind of played around with them a little bit. So. Mm -hmm. Was this that color sunset shot that you took? This is sunrise. Or sunrise? I oh, sorry, moonrise. Moonrise. No, no, I understand that. I'm talking about the mountains. I saw. Oh yeah, it's, it's a sunset. Yeah. Yeah, it was a sunset. So they took that and converted it into black and right. white, and then you took That's it right. out of the moon and composited it. Yeah. 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 yeah I saw I changed, I changed the. I changed the sky in this as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. I wonder if that. I'm seeing artifacts here, and I yeah. wonder if those are from Luminar. Uh, could be because that was from the, you know, I kind of, I know it's it's rough and rugged looking and I kind of, I, I liked it just the way it looked. It looked like, I don't know how to describe Run. it, but it, I think what he's good. talking about is around the edges of the moon. Yeah, I see the edge of the moon and the, uh, it's like all around the edge where it added the sky. It's like something yeah. happened to the mask and moving our, oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't see that on the one in your Facebook feed. Did you do anything since then, or no? No, it's the same it one. Just didn't show up. Yeah, yeah, I mean, a quick, easy fix would be to make a mask and just blur this with a brush. Right. Yeah. You know, if it's something you want to print. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to print it. No. <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> then no worries. I just like I just like the ruggedness of it. Right. It oh cool. yeah, yeah. Even the roughness of the moon, it looked. Yeah. Nice. Different, I guess. I had yeah, some fun. When I saw this, I thought, wow, that's really cool. When I, I had that moon all over the place, I had no idea where I was putting it. I moved it 
a hundred times and I thought oh, well, I'll just stick it in this one. Well, uh, the, the lighting on the observatory helps yeah. make it look realistic. So I was, oh. drive, I was driving by, back from Phoenix uh, uh, last uh, Friday mm -hmm. and uh, that Picacho Peak and, right. this, and I was just thinking, boy, that would be a great location for moon shots or sunrise shots. Yeah, it is. Oh, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, I would love to go to do that. But it's about three quarters of an hour drive from here, so. Yeah, it's probably longer than that because usually when I go to Phoenix, I figure that's my halfway mark. Oh, yeah. well, you need you need a '97 Camaro then, <laughs> <laughs> and a good radar detector. <laughs> I've got a plenty fast car. I just, want to, just well, last time I went up there was Thanksgiving Day, and boy, they were out. Oh, well, okay. They're looking for you. But uh, yeah, it's a beautiful area. It's a, have you have you guys did shots like that around Picacho Peak here? I have not, but I'd like to like to stop there sometimes, uh, oh. especially around sunrise or sunset, because there's always some dust in the air. That's yeah. where all the hoodoos go through. Yeah, a lot yeah. of a lot of sandstorms. Right, right. Yeah, I got caught one there once. Yeah. Not fun. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, that's pretty. Yeah. Over here at the uh, this ranch. is a canoe ranch pond. Yeah, so yeah. I've uh, I did quite a little bit, a few things to this. So this is um, this was on that day. You remember the day it was really misty. Uh huh. So I was down at the pond that day, and this is one of the shots from it. And it, it was kind of nice, as you can see in the background. It kind of just drifting away there mm -hmm. and uh, I dropped the saturation but I put up the uh what's the other one? Oh yeah I know yeah, the, the, yeah. I, I moved that right up so the trees and everything come up kind of nice and then because it was a flat gray sky and a flat gray pond I thought I'd try that luminar sky and reflection uh, to see how that worked out and and this this is what we got hmm. very good yeah yeah so it's, a, it's very very soft looking isn't it it's nice yeah real soft that's nice it's amazing the way it masks out areas yeah yeah when you think about it, all these leaves and trees and stuff now the the reflection isn't exactly the same as what it is in the sky, but it's kind of yeah, believable. It's enough to pull it together and yeah. make it believable. Uh, Alan, I was just wondering, you know, that little uh, tin roof back in the yeah. background there. Yeah. I wonder if you got rid of that, if it would just keep your eye from going over there. Yeah. I, you know, I kind of liked it to be honest with you because it. It, there's really nothing. I mean, the, the bank kind of leads you around that corner as well, and the trees push you over that way. Uh -huh. And I think it was just, uh, you know, a little a little hut or a little building or something. But I don't know. So what do, you, what do you guys think? I'd leave it, but knock it down a half a stop or something. Okay. Yeah. Well, you didn't get the reflection in the... And I guess that was the one thing that bothered me. Oh, I see. Well, it should be there actually because it's it's part of it. The the bit that bothered me a little bit is this bit here. I don't know if you can you can't see my cursor, but uh, that right there. Yeah, that yeah, bit there. Yeah, that's the first. That's the first thing I saw. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I would probably clone that out. Take that out, yeah. And and what about the brightness to the right of it as well? That was I was really it's a little bit too bright there. Yeah, not too bad. I don't, I don't mind it. Right, maybe right in here you can bring it down a little bit. Yeah. But there's that plenty around. That yeah. little hut thing should be in that reflection. So it may that may have taken it out. Uh, from I guess you can look at the original, but I'm thinking the this is what is representing the hut. Yeah. Hmm. 
But anyway, it's anyways, it's it's a nice image though. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, real nice. Kind of a nice it's feeling right thing. here, which is <laughs> even nicer. Yes. Like all you want. That's amazing. It's amazing how it's close by. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. So, so there weren't any fowl in the water uh, that day. There was a couple, but so really not 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 too much at that point. But there was yeah. some up at the far end there. Yeah. yeah. But they're so small, it's kind of very wide angle shot. So. Right. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. the same cool. day. This is the same day. So that's what this. That's what the sky looked like, and uh, just like the tree, these dead trees down there. And uh, what I was going to do was going to take two or three <laughs> and put them together, and uh, I was trying to kind of match them up so that they were similar heights and sizes and stuff. And then I thought, well, why don't I just duplicate this one and invert it? And, and I did that. I, I kind of like it the way it just on its own, you know, as a single image. But then I, when I doubled it up, I thought it looked pretty cool. And then I thought, you know what? A little bit of the electricity between them might be a little bit interesting. So Yeah, no, it's, it's a good image. So I added that. So I, I learned how to do that on on uh, YouTube, how to do that electricity. <laughs> yeah, cool. Did you try putting them butt to butt and see if that? I didn't. No, I didn't try that. No. Yeah, sometimes that's kind of cool. Yeah, that's a bit better. Yeah, you, you'll get you'll get a you know like a a flop of this, right. but the rest of it's pretty clear. So you could kind of clone some areas out on one side or the other, so it's not exactly symmetrical. Okay. And. Uh, it could be more believable as one image. Right. And I'm just trying to be a little bit different. And yeah, yeah, it's fun. But what do you guys think about the, the lightning part? Is it? I like it. You like it? Yeah, I'd like to see it maybe a little little wider. Wider, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a little too thin. I'd like to, with that, I'd like to see uh, be more ominous. Um, so I'd probably a real ominous uh, sky that was foreboding with go, you know with the lightning going back and forth and black and white image I think would right I mean would so, so add ominous. some add some uh, atmosphere to it kind of thing. yep yeah I would put a real ominous looking clouds in there or something okay. to add to the atmosphere of the lightning right give give it give it a little more of a story. Yeah, I think you don't need all that top either. Yeah. Maybe crop that down a bit. Mm -hmm. And the, you know, the other thing is, do you really need the borders around it? That's what I was. A lot. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you have the one in the center, you you know, you probably have one on the top, and let it go all the way around. But if, if you butt these up, then no, I wouldn't use the borders at all. Interesting that the lightning isn't quite the same over that border part, and, and it and it should be because that's that was put on the, that on top of that layer. That was well, it's going to react differently on, on different backgrounds, and, and oh, okay. what, yeah, you can see the difference between the black and the white. Right. And, yeah, that's always a challenge. Okay. Now they do have real lightning. That you can add luminar too. Okay. Yeah, you might want to play around with that again in that same area. So, uh, oh, let's see. I think it's in that sky objects. I was, I was kind of cool making the lightning though. I must admit, it was quite an interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how they how they show it on YouTube, but basically, we used to make a path and then we just keep repeating the path with different brushes, you know, a, a real sharp one and then go to different glows and and then change the uh, um, way it affects the other layers right you know and see how, what works best usually um, trying to remember the name um, yeah and uh, in your blend mode usually um, I don't have anything open no let's just do open recent 
right? So, okay. um, yeah, there's your blend motors. Why is it not lighting up? That's weird. I don't know. Something's locking up here. Oh, because I don't have more than one. There we go. It was a background rather than being a uh, layer. It has to be a layer. It doesn't work on background. But yeah, usually your lightener screen modes would work best. Screen mode, yeah. That's what I was using a little screen. bit of that lightning thing. Yeah. yeah. And, and you can also, um, you know, make multiple layers depend, you know, the different parts of it and try it with screen and lighten and play with the opacity. You can really fine tune it to the way you want it. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, all right, limiter, go back to edit. So yeah, in here, there's, there's lightning somewhere down here. Yeah, there you go. There's a couple of them there. Okay. This one. Oh, there you go. That looks a bit better than mine. Yeah. <laughs> You get that one. And so it's, even if you don't use these, they're good for reference. Right. So you can kind of see what's there. And a lot of times I'll just Google images lighting and then if that's what I'm making and you know, okay. just, just actually put it as a layer on, on the image you're working on so you can have a reference there. Well, I might, uh, I might, uh play around with this image a little bit more like you were saying and maybe introduce some more yeah, clouds and, the sky and, a few and more lightning and yeah. make it really yeah maybe i'll play around with this one a bit more cool excellent thanks guys thank you close jim's up all right let's go to jim murphy oh nice yeah, so I've uh, I've have several encounters with bobcats now. So I got quite a few bobcat pictures. So my idea this morning was I was thinking about doing a triptych and uh, with three images and the central image being larger, all in square format. And then the central image, you know, print this out and then have it stand off the wall a little bit. And then the other one, smaller images and uh, also square, but on the wall. So. Anyway, I was, I was looking, started looking at different images of, of bobcats, and uh, I thought for the central image, the third one down, which is the close-up of the face, would make a good larger central image. And then right. my original idea, I don't know, I had, was going to have one bobcat on the left looking towards the center and one on the right looking towards the center, but I don't know, that's maybe too symmetrical. Mm -hmm. yeah, but anyway, the question that I had for Sandy was that if you look at these images on the left, they're all different colors. And so would you take them all three into Photoshop side by side and then try and, you know, balance the colors since they're going to all be, you know, together? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, so say we took these three. Yeah, take three and. And, and we go into Photoshop. And uh, I would just, you know, make them make them smaller even like that you can see that one on the right's kind of reddish got reddish tones to it yeah let's give ourselves some room here Make this. Oops! I didn't want to do that. Get off of there. There we go. <coughs> Make this one a little bigger. The other thing I was noticing, though, it seems like the more I crop them in, the better they look, the more interesting they are. Yeah. The less of the, you know, the more you zero in, they get more interesting. So this was kind of my original, you know, concept, but I was really noticing the color differences. 
Yeah. So I kind of like the the warm one. Uh, mm -hmm. So you're going to want to warm these other two up. So basically what I would do is I would uh, set up a, a curve layer in each of these. So it's got curves on this one and then we'll do the same thing on this one. Well, you know what? So this is, this is the three images on, on the, there are the three separate images that we're just looking at here. They're not all on the one. No, you could you could put them all in one uh, one file if you wanted to just to right. just to balance them out. That'd be the other way to do it. Um, but basically, um, you know, first of all, I would I would just uh, go for my uh, my my blue and just kind of warm it up a little bit by pulling down and making it more yellow. Yeah. You know, and maybe you want to take a little more green, get rid of the green, get, make it a little redder. Maybe not too much, just a little bit. Yeah, I always think about adding red to get red instead of taking away green. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, if, if, if you add red, it's good, you know, it, it takes away cyan. It okay. It climbs up pretty quick, you know. You can do just a hair of that too, you know. So let's see, that's pretty close. And then, you know, you basically you just gotta go tweak it until you get it where you want it. Basically. Yeah, a little more, a little more warm. All right, so let's say we like that. And then I would just take this and put it on the other one. Okay. Oh, okay. Just drag it over there. And then if it's too much, which it seems to be, um, then you can go in and tweak it. So, but at least you got a starting point. So, so just you know, just hit the RGB and take down what you what you don't want. So maybe it's a little too warm. Yeah, maybe it doesn't need any red. Yeah, somewhere in there. You know, and just work them till you get them where you want them. Okay. You know, and then maybe this one you want to add a little more red to. You know, so you can come over here. And just go get a curves layer for that and go to your red. Maybe just give it a give it a hint of red. There you go. Okay. Kind, of, kind, of, kind of challenging to, to balance them. Yeah, yeah, it takes a little practice. Uh, when I used to deal with clients and they'd have a swatch they'd give you and you have to match it on screen. Uh, you'd have to get a you know the, the readouts and that gets pretty involved. Uh, I can briefly show you basically what you do is uh, on your point thing here, uh, you know, your picker, if you go over, um, there's, uh, there's a multiple color sampler tool mm -hmm. and, and you can pick several areas all at once and, and you get readouts for each one. Here's the three of them. See one, two, and three. Mm -hmm. uh, series number three, you know, and, and then you would mess with your slider, uh, your curves until you get that RGB mix exactly where oh, you want. But I don't think you need to be that crazy. No, I think it's just eye eyeballing it. It's probably yeah, you can just get visual and be done with it. Okay. But if you ever need to do it, that's that's how you start. Okay. I was, I was sort, of, sort of thinking something like that, but I, that's yeah. good to know. That's pretty neat. Yeah. Um, if you want to make it easier, you could put it all in one file and just put a curve on each layer and, and, and lock it to the layer. You know how to do that? Uh, let's see. Okay, put them all in one file. No, I'm not sure. Why don't you demo, demo that for yeah. me? Yeah, all right. Let's uh, let just... Uh, Sounds like something you could do in five minutes and take me a couple hours to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so let's just say we got these two. Okay. All right, and I'm gonna put, yeah, I'm gonna put this one in, in here. And then take the original one and take it down a bit. 
Okay. And then uh, I'm just going to make the background lighter. So image. Well, let me return on that. You want to go to canvas size. So you're adding more canvas rather than image. Yeah. You know, and, and I would just uh, do it from one side. And maybe we want to add like five inches just so you got a lot of room. Okay. okay. All right. And then uh, a little trick in your move tool is if you hold down the command, you, it'll tell you which image you're over. And then you click on it, and then you can move it. So you don't have to fish around so much. But let's say these are the two you want. All right, so you're going to make your curves. So I got one curve here. And all right now it's easy because it's, it's below the other image. But if it was above the other image, it would affect both of them, right? So first you want to put it above the image you want to affect. But then if you Go right in between and hold down the the uh, command key, I believe. No, it's the option key on a Mac or Alt key on a PC. You see how that turns into like a little square with an arrow? Yes. And you click on that, and now it will only affect this layer. So even if I move this layer below, you can see it didn't turn. Now if I click that again, see now it's going to do both of them. So basically, you're tagging the curve to each layer, and then uh, and then later on, uh, what you can do is um, basically take the curve out of each one and put it back into the original. So say if the curve was for this guy, I'd I'd open him up again over here, and just drag that curve over, and then. It would be in that file so you know that it's it's there all right so let's say we're going to make a curve for this guy we're going to go over here and and again i'm going to put it above so that you can see that when i add this curve if if i do something wacky like this okay see it's affecting both but if i clip it to that layer it's only affecting the one on the left. What, what was that? That was the uh, uh, control. Which key was it that you hit the clip? It's it? the uh, option key or the alt key if you're on a PC. Alt key on PC. Yeah. Okay. Alt key. Right. And then now that I've got this, let's say it's where I want it. It's not, but say that's what I like. I can take this curve and put it over here on the actual file and then save that file. And then that way you can send that to the printer and it's all ready to go. Oh. Now keep him from making mistakes. You can you can um, flatten this file so that this is baked into the background image. And uh, try to yeah, flattens under Im layer, mm -hmm. so flatten image. See now it just all goes back to a background. Then you know if there's some reason the guy turns it off or or something happens uh, or he messes around with your curve, <laughs> you know, because it's there. Um, this prevents that because it's already baked into the image. Right. So, so that's how I would do that. Does that help or you need more? Yeah, no, that I, I, it gives me something to work with. Yeah, if you get stuck, just. Yeah, send me some files or get on Zoom. Yeah. Have you have you guys ever printed anything over the the center? Yes. No. Okay. Yeah, that printer is pretty good. I, I I would make sure it's got fresh inks or someone used it recently. <laughs> it's not getting much use right now. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's take a look at some images here. So. So you should. All these at Sweetwater? Or? Shot all these. I probably shot uh, 70 pictures of uh, the Bobcat, maybe something mm -hmm. like that. Plus, I've got a bunch of other ones from a couple other encounters, which I haven't gone back through to select images that would work together. But yeah, I shot these all over a period of 25 minutes or something like that. Oh, where was this? It's Sweetwater. It's Sweetwater, yeah. There's a. Uh, Where is that? 
Sweetwater is you get off at of Prince Road and head east from uh, the freeway. West. West. I'm sorry. Yeah, yes. I, right, head, right, right. I get off of Prince yeah. Road. You head away from the freeway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the exit is Prince Road. Yeah. yeah. And uh, there's a uh, if you've not been there, there's a, it's a, so it's a wastewater facility treatment where they pump. Uh, you know, rejuvenated or cleaned water out into these swamps, and there's a lot of birds. Uh, I saw just a whole bunch of birds. I uh, got a nice shots of a Harris hawk up close, really close to a Harris hawk, and a bunch of other birds. Um, but there also are, according to the guy who works there, there are eight different bobcats that frequent the area because of the they hunt the birds as well as rats. There's a thing called a cotton rat that they hunt there. <laughs> anyway, there was a mother and her, you know, her kit was almost full, fully grown, but uh, um, they're kind of used to people. So you can tell I'm pretty close to this cat. Yeah. And, uh, mm -hmm. but I just kind of got out where it was going and knew where it was going to come, just stood still and then, you know, kind of went by me. I've been as close as uh, four feet to these animals are just standing there and they go right by me because they're, oh, they're, yeah. they're, they're just not too so close that my telephoto lens is useless. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was going to say, what lens did you use there? Well, I was using my my one I used for the birds because I was there for birds is 200, 600. Uh, but this this animal's 12, 12 feet away, oh, something like that. Hmm. Nice so the cross street is Prince and what? I-10. Freeway. Oh, Prince and oh. Yeah, you go west off I-10. Um, you can look it up uh, if you Google it. Uh, it's pretty easy to find. Just just do Sweetwater Reserve uh, Tucson. Uh huh. Okay. You'll find it. Yeah. Yeah, I've yet to get up there, but it's on my list. <laughs> All right. Hmm. I think I'll get there sooner than I'll get to India, but. <laughs> <laughs> so for some reason this one doesn't look quite as sharp as it should but anyway the, the cat was kind of resting in the shade yeah yeah did like you that. change did you change his eyes out a, a little bit or not i don't think on, so on the first one we just looked at i did I lighten them up a little bit because yeah. they was just so dark in that area yeah mm -hmm. so you couldn't there was a lot of shadow there and I just went in and lightened that up. Uh, this one, I didn't do anything. I could lighten them up. It might be a good idea to go in and lighten, lighten them. them. They're a little dark. Make them a little more amber. Yeah, if you yeah, want to. Yeah, exactly. Well, they look more green here. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I don't know what that is over his left eye there. Yeah. Did, did little... you darken this background or was that? I did darken the background. So I saw, I did subject select and uh, yeah in Lightroom and uh, went in and darkened the background. Mm -hmm. Cool. Maybe pull it back in here so you get a little, little bit of something back there like this. Okay. Yeah, it might be just a bit much. Yeah, cool. Yeah, it looks like a little piece of debris on his eyelash or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you yeah, can clone that out. Pretty tight. I, I like including the ears because they have those little black tassels that, that tells you it's not a pussy cat that it's right. a, that it's a bobcat. But at the end of the day, when I cropped it in closer, it was just more compelling image than including you know the yeah. the tops of the ears and everything. So I just I, I ended up liking it better cropped in. Yeah, I, I love I love the bobcat shots. I really do. Yeah, I'm just following. I wonder if you should crop like maybe above that mark. Mm -hmm. Yeah, although yeah, that that works too because you still got this as an end point. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I'd, I'd click up his eyes a bit. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. This one I used uh, some topaz on that expressionism to get that bring out fur patterns a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or, or, or might have been fur and feather. I don't know one of those, but uh, oh, yeah. to bring out the, uh, the the patterns in the. I'm trying to bring out the patterns in the in the fur. 
Yeah, that works. Did you mask any of it off or just let it go? I did. I think I did. I believe, in fact, I masked this one off a little bit too and darkened the background just to try and bring right. the animal out a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah, that works. Nice, nice shot. Nice touch. Yeah, nice I, love, I love the big whiskers coming right around there. It's really cool. Yeah. Yep, that works out yeah. real well. Amazing animals, eh? They're they're cool, very cool animals. Yeah, I went to uh, the other day there. There was a lot of birds in a in the bush in the backyard, and I went I went to the window, and they all flew away. And I thought, oh shit! I must have came up and scared them. And then two seconds later, a bobcat strolls by the <laughs> the patio window. <laughs> Either a bobcat or a hawk, some something scared him. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. it's a bobcat, but by the time I got out there, he was all gone. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I think a triptych uh, would be nice. Uh, just go through your stuff and find the ones that work, and then just use that technique I showed you to match them up. The the left, the black ear there. I had to paint. This was a uh, blown out. Uh, I don't know why, but it was. I had to. Bring in the hair, bring in <laughs> hair there to fill that in. Yeah. Well, it works. It works. Getting back to that balancing tech, it might be easier just making three images um, open separate side by side rather than going through all the okay. Rural, putting them in one file and 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 tagging the uh, okay. curves to the layers and moving them. Uh, it, it, it'd probably be more comfortable just opening the three and then. Again, if you get one and it's close, just copy the, the curve by dragging it to the next one and just adjust it until it looks good. Okay. So you're not starting from scratch. Okay. So that, that, uh, Jim, that uh, fur and feathers thing, did that have quite an effect on the, on the fur? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. It'll bring out patterns you wouldn't normally see. I mean, it finds this patterns yeah, and accentuates them. See what's going on here. Yeah, yeah zero, zero in, you can really kind of see what it's doing there. Right. Yeah. I'll have to try that. I've never tried that. Yeah, I haven't seen that one. I'll have to look for it. Yeah, there's one called Fern Feathers. It's a, uh, yeah. as, as the name implies, it's, it's good for fern feathers. All right. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Let's figure those in. Thanks for the tips on equalizing those colors. Appreciate oh, you. Sure. Sure. Well, I. Picked up a new macro and oh, oh all right. a little bit. So Which one did you get? I got the uh, the Canon uh, 100, and uh, I'll show it to you real quick. It's it's a big mother. <laughs> Weighs about one and a half pounds. It's a lot of glass. It's a two eight. And wow, nice lens. It is a nice lens. No. Oh. A little pricey, but I figured I'd splurge for the Hollywood. Are you, get, are you gonna get a rail? Uh thinking about it because yeah. boy, oh boy, hand holding it and going out. It is critical focus. I was amazed how much it changes, especially when you're in close on stuff. So yeah. Yeah. The trees were challenging with the frost on them because the trees were moving and I was moving, and you know, yeah. and then you grab a branch and all the all the do would come off so but uh it's a it's a new learning experience wow. yeah, Look at that. yeah. Nice. this was on the ground and fairly rigid so that was easy yeah yeah but yeah this was that morning when we had the fog what was that last thursday i think right yeah yeah that was a super day i must have not yeah that's really nice yeah, some of us were down at Desert Meadows that morning. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah, oh, he actually got there. Oh, yeah. Well, I guess you missed the, the email. I, I, I missed the memo. Yeah, it was too yeah. cold. <laughs> Steve wrote a really funny email. Yeah, he did. I was going to, I would send you a dictionary definition of COAT coat. <laughs> <laughs> Mittens. <laughs> What was it? What was the F stop in this one? Was it? Uh, I was I was pretty far up. Let's see. Uh, Sixteen. Yeah. Let me see if it'll show it on info. Um, yeah. 
There we go. F32. F32. Wow. Yeah. 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 And when you get up there, you got to get a pretty big ISO too. Plus, I was at a 500 of those. Just these things were blowing. So I figured I'd grab what I could. All right. Nice. Oh, thanks. And that's why I darkened the background down a bit. That's cool with the sun coming through the drop there. Yeah, the little bursts are great. Wondered if you could, are you able to zoom up on that more? The drop, oh. drop with the sun coming through it? Oops, so let me, let's see here. Yeah, I guess so. It's, oh, too big. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like, I like that. Yeah. Really yeah. brings you. Yeah, bigger, bigger crop, yeah, tighter crop on it. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Lots of lots of uh, depth texture. Did you did you mess with this one much, Sandy? Or? Not a whole lot. You know, I I put just a little clarity into it, and I darkened down this corner a bit, and down here a bit. That branch has got a nice looking. Texture on it, hasn't it? So. Yeah, it's a Palo Verde, so um, yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty good. Pretty amazing. Yeah, it's got a little uh, dial on it to um, affect the the bokeh. And I I haven't had a chance to play with it yet because when I started to use it. I quickly realized I had to be on a tripod because it takes things out of focus and then you have to compensate. Mm. But um, yeah, that's just the normal bokeh on there. And I, I, I'd like to see these get softer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This was kind of cool. That it, this was actually vertical branches and the, <laughs> the dew is still hanging at them. You know, a nice little sunburst again right in the middle yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah, that same morning known as the Desert Meadows, there was a cactus, stupid cactus blooming there. And I, and, I, and it had dew all over it. And I got some nice shots of that. Oh, same, good. same morning. Yeah, I went over there yesterday. Oh, this was just on our swing. I just got real close. Like I, this, the other nice thing about this lens is it'll go like 1.4 times actual and, mm. and focus up to like an inch or two. Oh, yeah, it's it, it gets in there pretty good. Maybe it's maybe it's four inches. I, I can't remember, but it's got it's got some pretty amazing specs on it. And then just grabbing a plant against the sky. Yeah. Some spider webs and a lot of hair. Nice. And then this was over at Desert Meadows. That was one of those containers with the glass marbles in it. Mm -hmm. You can see how close I am in the center yeah. there. <laughs> Selfie. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, and just some of their stuff. Cool plant. Yeah. I did this yesterday. Guess that's it. Let's see. Yep. Thanks. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Okay. Uh, still working on Italy. I, I just found like another 800 shots that I'd done on my phone in with using the Lightroom camera. I don't know if you guys have Lightroom on your phones. Yeah, I do. I yeah, do. But, but it saves them as DNGs, which um, basically is raw. So I'm going to see how that works. Took a while to figure out how to get them over. Um, I had to move into the file system, and then I had to you know, move them to the computer from there. I was able to get them in because I didn't want to sync them all because I'm starting to run out of space on the cloud storage on Adobe. So well, that worked out okay. Anywho, that's it for this week. Um, Very good. You guys gonna be around next week? 
think so. Monday, right. yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it should right. be here. Sounds good. Let me let me stop sharing here.